Hey YouTube, Happy New Year and welcome to the first video of the year 2024. In this episode, I will be introducing a new land design that I'm calling Advanced Gen version 2024.0101. I know it's a terrible name, but I need to give it a new name because there is a significant change in the way inter VLAN routing works in this particular design. But before I continue, please allow me about 10 seconds to express my gratitude to everyone. I just want to say thank you to all my viewers for hitting my goal of 1,000 subscribers before the year 2023 ends. It took me two years of quickly posting videos and this would not have been possible without your support. Thank you very much. So similar to many of my earlier contents, this is a completely never before seen or done in YouTube channels or any forums I visit, even the official TP-Link forums. I'm going to show in this video how I do layer three switching. So that means I'm going to show an inter VLAN routing using switch rather than your gateway or your router. Okay, so I'm just switching to this particular design. So traditionally switching happens in layer two and routing happens in layer three. But in this video, you will see how I implement layer three switching. So in all the videos and guides that you have seen before regarding TP-Link Umada, the gateway such as the ER605 or the ER7206 and the newer versions is the one responsible for inter-VLAN routing. And normally in these videos, you will often see a router on stick design wherein all the VLANs defined are gateway interfaces that connects to the access switch, similar to this one. So router on stick is great. But as internet speed becomes faster and as becomes more complex, there is a greater burden that is being handled by that single network uplink between your gateway and the switch. An alternative is to make the gateway your core or distribution switch. You can see some of the designs will have multiple switches directly connected to the gateway or get a better router with better uplinks. And unless you have a really hefty gateway with great backplane speed, router and stick will mean that land-to-land -land traffic will be impacted since all inter VLAN traffic will always have to go through the gateway. However, with this new design approach, all internet traffic will still be handled by the gateway. However, inter VLAN traffic will be handled by the multi-layer switch. And if you have been watching my videos, the later changes to the new gen LAN design such as this one was to break away from the router and stick and improve inter VLAN traffic. And in this iteration, this particular one I call advanced gen, I believe this is another great alternative, if not the best option to achieve that. So before I head on to the configuration, I just want to highlight a very important feature of this layer three switching. So let me start with the pros. Since most switches have a lot of network ports, it means that there will be plenty of routable LAN ports you can now have a router with more 10 gigabit ports than ER8411 can offer. So the newer switch that TP-Link is offering, that means you can use those multiple 10 gigabit ports as routable ports. Since switch handles routing with routable ports, inter VLAN traffic is vastly improved with backplane speed performance. As for the cons, the layer 3 switch doesn't do not, so it can never replace your gateway and internet will always be handled by your gateway. Layer 3 switch doesn't have many other fancy one features such as VPN and port forwarding, but your gateway already handles that so you will still always need your gateway for those types of functionalities. And layer 3 switching with this particular configuration and with this particular design, it requires better knowledge of your network equipment and how multiple routers work in an environment. So if you are new to networking or Umada, this may feel a little more complicated to implement or articulate. But, but for those who are adventurous enough to utilize the switch layer 3 functionality, this will be a great project to try out. So I know it's a mouthful for the intro and use cases, but this is a completely new territory and I hope you will join me for the ride. So the way this video is going to work is that I'm going to show you the full configuration. I have made sure that all the configurations are done and I'm just going to show you and walk you through all the configurations and the settings. And then finally, I will show you how to create one network from the scratch, which you can replicate to do multiple VLANs in the future. So these are the devices that I have. 
so i have tested this for the past several months now this one is the og gateway you can see this is the version 1.0 hardware um, i have version 1.0 sg2210 mp this will be my layer 3 switch for this particular video i have tested other switches as well like sg3428 and it works well as well i'm using version 1.0.8 firmware as my access point i'm using eap-235 access point another version 1 hardware so these are all OG hardware as you can see here and I'm using the latest 3.1.1 firmware from them and let me go to the ER605 first for the ports one thing that you will notice is that it's only got one VLAN defined in the ports these are one interfaces so I'll just start here you can see it's one and then you can see it's one and then you can see it's one nothing peculiar about that this looks like a flat network but it is not a flat network then let's go to the switch you will see something a little bit different than what you usually see on your switch you will see i have villain interfaces in here 1 11 21 31 41 51 61 71 and 81 and i'm going to create 91 from scratch so that you can follow through but for now these are the villains that I have and if I go through one of them as you can see here this is where I define the villains that we are normally defining on the gateway interface since this is not a gateway interface but a switch virtual interface I have to define the networks and related information on the switch so you can see here I have it marked static 192.168.11.1 that will be the IP address of the switch virtual interface this is the subnet mask I have enabled DHCP server on this particular network and you can see here I have defined the range as well. It's not as granular as the one that you will see on the gateway interface and then you can define the primary DNS, secondary DNS and then default gateway so on and so forth. You can define IPv6 here, click cancel. It will be the same for everything. Let me just go through everything here. It will be the same. Sixty one, so now I'm seventy one. Same thing here, and then eighty one. Okay, so if I go to settings and I go to wired networks and then I go to LAN. This is where you'll notice that this is the only one that has it says interface. Like I said, this is the typical network design, network configuration that you will see in all the other YouTube videos that you've seen in the past. You can see that I only have one VLAN interface and this interface is the one connecting the gateway and the switch. So if I go back to the design, that's the one. That's the, that's the reason why I only have one interface defined on this gateway that doesn't mean i cannot create more interfaces but for this particular video and this particular demonstration i only need one so this is the link between the switch and the gateway and all the rest of the vlans are all layer 2 only vlan interfaces so this will not show up in any of the gateway ports and that's the reason why if you go here if you click here it doesn't even show and before i continue with the actual configuration let me just go to the profile just like in the previous videos that I have shown you how to configure and to break away from the router and stick, I have to create a new type of O in here. So basically this one has the 101-LAN as the native network and all the rest of the layer 2 VLANs as the member type VLANs. Now that I have created this and I have created all the networks, I have to make sure that the gateway knows where that new network is. I only have one network defined on the gateway interface. All these other networks are defined on the switch. So the gateway doesn't know how to go to that network basically. It's completely alien to this gateway. And we have to introduce the communication between the switch and the gateway between these networks that are defined on the switch. So how do we do that? So you go to transmission and you go to routing and you go to the static route and there you go, how to define it. Okay. As you can see, I have all the other networks defined here. Again, I will show you how to create a new one and how to fully 
get this going but this is how you create that link between the switch and the gateway and the layer 3 switch and your traditional Omada gateway how to verify that so you have to go to insights you have to go to the routing table and there you go you will see that in order for the gateway to see these networks it has to go to this IP address so what is this IP address 192.168.101.101 so that will be your switch and let me just do a quick demo okay, so let me show my desktop again because I'm going to plug in and plug some cables in here and of course I do have internet as well go so if you're looking at the small screen this is my machine so if I remove this I will get disconnected there you go and let me go to the one of the networks here Hold on. let me just play the third one so this is my media PC it's currently in the 101 VLAN and I would like to show you that I'm going to connect to one of the VLANs that I have already defined which is 31 because currently all of these are in VLAN 101 oh, so let's see 31 VLAN VLAN so this one will fail it will start to fail because now I have to plug in and plug my cable so that I get a new IP because this one is still using the old IP plug and unplug there you go and let me try again uh, this one is a little bit loose let's connect it again there you go this is internet and now we'll have 31 that too so let's change this one for still says 101 here oh it still says all so let me refresh this one not sure why it says all here um 31 47 31 vlan as you can see here so let me go to 41 vlan ports it says here 31 41 vlan now it will time out again because now I have a different IP. I'm still at the 31 here. Okay. So I will not plug in and plug. I will just disable and enable. There you go. And then enable. There you go. So now if I check the my IP address. That will be 41.4 so as you can see all my definitions for my layer 3 switching is actually working already now, I need to go back to admin VLAN because I'm going to create a new VLAN and I want to make sure that I will not get disconnected so let me go here back Let's see if I have a new IP address yep I'm back okay so before you can start the configuration the prerequisites for all this preparation is that your switch and your gateway and your controller are already connected and configured and the IP address of your layer 3 switch the port is actually configured to be on the profile VLAN 101 so that is the management VLAN my gateway the ER605 is connected to the switch port 1 as you can see here so if you're looking at the mini video that will be this one so that is the main prerequisite to be able to configure everything and to be able to set it up now let me show you how this one is created in the switch interface 
to create this type of network you have to go to settings similar okay. you have to start from there you have to go to wired networks so this is the step one so this one is LAN and I'm going to create a 91 VLAN so create new VLAN I will call it 91 VLAN and don't select interface you have to select VLAN there you go and VLAN 91 and switches only okay then click save there you go you have the 91 VLAN now since I created the new VLAN I have to add it to the L2O VLAN this one I have to add it make sure that it's part of the VLAN there you go okay so now that I have done that I have to configure the switch virtual interface it will be defined in the switch but it's not defined as anything that will be usable for the network so let me see oh I can disconnect port 6 so let me just disconnect port 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 let me just disconnect port 6 and I will just use these ports for demonstration purposes Okay, port 6 and I'm going to use this as a 91 VLAN so I have defined the 91 VLAN in here now once I connect my PC in the 91 VLAN nothing will happen meaning I will not be able to get a DHCP because I still haven't fully defined this network on the switch okay, so I'm connecting here and now if you're looking at the small screen this is my PC here. So I'm going to disconnect. And you will see that I will get disconnected. And once I connect here to the 91 VLAN, okay, we will be request timed out. You will see that it's connected here, but it cannot get any IP. Because the 91 VLAN is just a layer to VLAN. Nothing has been defined. Nothing is going to happen there. It's going nowhere. So let me go back to my previous port. So I'm just demonstrating what happens to the port if it's not properly defined yet as a layer to switching VLAN interface. So I have to go to the config and then go to VLAN interface and you will see this VLAN 91 in here okay so let me edit this one first okay. and then now I'm starting to configure it static okay 192.168.91.1 and I will enable DHCP server in here so that future devices that will connect to this VLAN will have IP address so 91.1 slash 24 I'll have this DNS and the whole gateway is 91.1 I will not enable IPv6 I will click apply there you go it succeeded now I have to enable it click apply just to verify everything is as it is so just click edit it again just make sure that these are the things that you said before and just to be sure click apply and then click apply again and if I go to ports in here this 91 once I move my PC in this particular port I should have the 91 VLAN IP address so let's just go here go here again and if you're looking at the main screen I'm removing my cable here there you go and I'm connecting it here now there you go and nothing will happen on the pin but I will be able to get an IP so this one is expected And, but I would like to show you that I can get an IP now. Now I'm in the 99 and I'm getting the first IP available, which is that 2.
But you're saying, hey, RC, it already has an IP, it has a gateway defined, it has a DNS server defined, everything is working correctly, yada, yada. But well, why is it still cannot reach the internet? It's basically literally no internet right now. Well, because this network is only defined on the layer 3 switch, the gateway, your ER605, doesn't know its existence. So I need to announce its existence to the gateway. So if I go back here, this VLAN 192.168.91 is only defined on this switch, but it doesn't know how to get here, nor this gateway is aware of the existence of this particular network. So we have to bridge them together. So in order for me to do that, let me go back to my previous admin port. Here we go. And let's wait until I get my IP. Here we go. I got my IP. Okay, let me go back here. If you remember, we have just created a layer to VLAN 91 and we have configured its interface, but it doesn't know how to get to the internet. It can reach all the other VLANs, it just doesn't have internet access. So how do we get internet access to this one? So you go to settings and you go to transmission and you go to routing now i can easily edit this one and add that subnet here so i will just add subnet and uh, like so 192.168.91.0 slash 24 but i will not do that i will just show you that you can create additional switch route so so let's call it 91 dash route Two one six eight that ninety one that zero, and then in order to get to that network, you have to use one oh one that one oh one. So this is the switch IP address, and this is the network that is defined on the switch. So create, and you can see here. So the reason why I created this separately is so that I can demonstrate the I'll just drive down and drive off without affecting all the rest of the network. Okay, so now let's do a demonstration again. do this okay so let me demonstrate that if you're looking at the small screen now I'm going to remove my cable and this time around the ping will fail but once I connect this to 91 VLAN it will now succeed because now the switch and the gateway knows how to route the data and there you go and I will have a 91 IP still 91.2 now I have internet access. Com. There we go. Um, you can verify that by going to insights, routing table, and you will see this 91.0 slash 24 is defined here as well. Okay, so let's make it tidy by turning it off and then turning it off. I'm making sure that there is no conflict with the routing once I add this route here. So let me add this one. Add subnet 192.168.91.0 slash 24. Then click apply. Now let me turn it back on. There we go. And I will just do a quick check of the 91 network. So quick check since my PC, this PC is in the 101 VLAN. It's in the same level as the switch. I can check if the 91 interface is alive. And it's alive. And you, can you can check all the rest of the interface as well, like um, 11.1. You go you can check it um, it's alive so that means all this one should be working just fine as well okay that one works so you can see here this one has access to YouTube I just refresh the page 
okay so i think that's pretty much it if you made it to the end of this video thank you very much for watching the video in its entirety it really helps the channel my topics are usually really niche and this often means low traffic and low view count and those who know about the Omada product they tend to visit the more popular channels so all your views especially if you're viewing my videos in its entirety it really helps so in the past i will do a search on tp link Omada and my videos never even make it on the youtube search list so i noticed last december some of my videos do show up whenever i'm doing a search and for that i'm thankful for all the viewers and for all the subscribers who always watch my videos in its entirety thank you very much again i'll see you on the next one thank you and bye bye